And I know what you may be thinking. Transcendence, you only have one Estus Flask. Are you really going to do the boss? Well, I promise, he is not that much of a problem. Uh, this could be your first boss of the entire game because of its closeness to Firelink Shrine. So they made this guy really easy, which is a shame because I think he is a cool boss. Let's watch this little cutscene. It's pretty interesting. Let's see if you can figure out what he's doing when I'm interrupting him. even gets his own unique uh, music that no one will hear because you kill him too quickly. Basically he casts spells and clones himself, fights more or less like a regular uh, caster type enemy. You have to figure out which one's the real him. Only the real one does real damage to his life bar. But if you do enough damage to the fakes, they do disappear. I think this is the real one. Come here already. Oops, I hit my mic. I'm sorry. I keep I have a bad habit of doing that. Now I've lost track. Maybe it's you. And that's Pinwheel. Easy, easy, easy boss. Uh, he's a bit of a meme because he is so easy, and most people put him off until later in the game because the catacombs are the real boss of this area. They're much, much harder than he is. 15,000 souls, that's definitely early game boss amounts. And what this does is it gives you the right of kindling. It lets you kindle bonfires to 15 or 20 instead of just to 5. Uh, I promise you, you never need to do that many. I got a Mask of the Child, that's not the good one. Um, you never need to do that many. 10 is enough for anyone. 15, like, maybe if you want to do, like, a really difficult area you're very bad at, try to go for 15. And there should be a bonfire here somewhere I can teleport out with. So as you can see, I didn't even use one Estus Flask. He doesn't do a lot of damage. He takes a ton. Doesn't have a lot of HP. His attacks are very, very easy to dodge or block if you prefer. Uh, do I need to homeward out of here? Another developer message, shortcut ahead. I think this is telling you where the bonfire is, because it's kind of hard to tell. Anyway, can you see what kind of area this is here? This looks like the lid of a coffin. Like a giant stone lid of a coffin. This area that we're coming up on is called the Tomb of Giants. And well, guess what? It's literal. This guy was actually inside of a giant coffin doing his stuff. Uh, he's necromancing. I probably need to equip the lantern now because just cannot find that bonfire. If there is a bonfire here, I don't really recall. I remember there being a bonfire in the room with him. So, remember I said something along the lines of, oh yes, the lantern, that's going to be necessary. Droops from his long beard lock, even though you hold it by its hair. The lantern alights the tomb of giants, Nido's light devouring domains of death. Uh, this is a terrible, terrible weapon. And unfortunately, you have to use it 
and it takes up the place of takes the place of your shield. It looks kind of cool though. So this is what you do: you hold out the lantern, just so you can see down here. Here's another coffin lid. Tomb of Giants. Uh, where is the bonfire? Do I want to mess with you right now? Also, the darkness messes with your luck on range. Mm, very bad. So I guess I need to go through, get my 40,000 souls and three humanities, and just homeward bone my way back out because I don't really necessarily want to do Tomb of Giants right now. Uh, I guess I could stick with the... Ah, I think I can get past that every time and it never happens. Um, what was I saying? Um, I guess I can just stick with the meat cleaver because there are no more... Uh, necromancers down here anymore. Pretty sure, anyway. And it's noticeably stronger, of course. I've already restored that little bit of damage that the trap did to me.
Okay. I just warped back to Undead Parish real quick. Uh, actually, I just went to uh, drop off those humanities at the Fair Lady and increase the power of my Pyromancy Flame because I need to get it much higher than it has been. But also, check this out. There's a statue of a woman and child that is similar but not identical to the one found in the painted world. And here, we see all of these hollows kind of praying to nothing. And so Lair is right here. Mm. Uh. Oh, hello there. Forgive me, I was just pondering about my poor fortune. I did not find my own son, not in Anor Londo, nor in Twilight Blight Town. Where else might my son be? Lost Ivan, or the tomb of the Grave Lord? But I cannot give up. I became undead to pursue this. But when I peer at the sun up above, it occurs to me, what if I am seen as a laughing stock, as a blind fool without reason? Well, I suppose they wouldn't be far off. <laughs> oh, it's okay. History will uh, be on your side here because everyone everyone loves Solaire. Solaire's the greatest. I still can't pray at this. Maybe I have to be in online mode. Oh, hello there. I will stay behind to gaze at the sun. The sun is a wondrous body, like a magnificent father. If only I could be so grossly incandescent. Maybe you will. Maybe that's a bit of foreshadowing. Can I get the sun to disappear? No. Anyway, this is the Altar of Sunlight where you would join the, the uh, Sunlight Warriors Covenant. I, I can't do it and I'm not sure why. It must be that I have to be online because it's definitely an online only sort of thing. Uh, every time you co-op, whether you are the one summoned or the one being summoned with a um, Sunlight Covenant member and you defeat a boss, then you get a Sunlight Medal. You turn in Sunlight Medals to increase your level here. Uh, there is a Miracle where you get the... Uh, where do I put it? You get the, the miracle called... I think it's Sunlight Spear. It's not Sunlight Spear, it's just like Lightning Spear or something like that. You get one of the few attack miracles in the game from this. And obviously Lightning Bolts are what these guys throw. They do miracles when you summon them in. You've seen them, you know, used. Uh, so this is very useful for being a online play because you get matched up with co-op more often. Um, it's useful if you're a, a cleric miracle user because it's one of the only miracles that does damage in the game other than like Wrath of Gods, which is very short range and not very powerful. And it's just, it's also Solaire's Covenant, so why wouldn't you want to join this, right? I noticed this statue is shattered. And I mentioned earlier that the the son's firstborn, the uh, Gwyn's firstborn son, um, was erased from history. And it looks like this may have been a statue of him. Uh, the reason I don't think the, the son's firstborn born is Solaire specifically is because this here looks like the, the uh, Dragon Slayer spear that uh, uh, Ornstein had. It's uh, a spear with like a, a long cross brace on it. Uh, it doesn't look like Solaire's sword at all. And also like there's no shield or anything. Uh, there's no reason that Solaire couldn't have taken up use of the sword instead of a spear, but uh, 
I just don't think it is. And the reason I pointed out the mother and child is because this may be uh, depicting uh, the um, <laughs> the mother of Gu Guinevere. Oh, God, I can't remember all these names or all the G names. This may be the mother of Guinevere holding a baby Guinevere. Which would explain why it's at the sunlight altar. So this could be the oldest son, and then the oldest daughter and mother over here. Might be. It's There's no real evidence that that's true, but uh, it makes kind of sense. And the reason I called out that it looks like the one that's in the painted world because there's also some fan theories that Gwyn, Guinevere, is the mother of Priscilla. Which would mean that the father is one of the dragons that's nearby, probably. Which would be Seath. Are you gonna, are you gonna do this ever? Whatever, dude. Uh, I don't think it's as simple as parenthood. I think it's more like Seath does weird experiments with magic and like created her out of himself that's not like in a normal biological way. Good stable. The only reason I'm killing these guys is because I want to see if they would drop a few shards, but I guess not. So that is the Sunlight Altar. I will probably never use it. Maybe I'll actually, after I end this part, I will go online and see if this turns this back on. Uh, what do I need to do next? I need to go to Lost Isolith, which I'm not looking forward to. I hate that area. And New Londo, which I could have done much earlier, but I have not. Uh, go back to Blight Town, do the Great Hollow, and, oh yeah, uh, Darkroot Basin. Let's actually go there now. So I was planning on doing this one, but I totally forgot. Let's warp to Dead Parish. And then next time... We will do our best, or I will do my best, and you can follow along with me, to beat the Hydra in Darkroot Basin for the DLC reasons. So thank you for watching Dark Souls 1. I'll see you next time.